Hello, fellow Nigerians. I beg this Peter will be matter don't tire person. No, I want change. So because as I they talk, so it be like say eh, APC people. This this first case it no reach on our side. I beg, make you help me. Oh, how much not they buy for for we on a day? Because as Peter will be supporter, I they hear win win win. It they red for this side. We don't they buy for now for Abuja for six hundred and seventy naira. Ah. Hey, hey, hey. I want change. I beg, I beg. Let me know how much until they buy for on a side though. Make we see how much until they buy first. Okay, oh, I beg. If you know so now they buy them for hundred and something, hundred and something naira. But make you let me know because uh, this matter it don't they shell it too much. On the other hand, World Bank they let us know say this is just the beginning. <laughs> I laugh in Swahili. My country people not be smart, you know. They say the poverty had just started. The hunger had just started. <laughs> the removing of fair subsidy without a plan B is not a piece of cake. Jagaban is jagabarin. Everybody from Nigeria, make una hear from Arise News, made a on a waiting World Bank talk. Um, the World Bank has already said that the removal of subsidy in the first instance um, led to more about five million Nigerians, more Nigerians being subjected to you know to, to higher poverty incidences, and this would worsen that um, that situation. Okay, oh, make una just say they they play, oh, na they play, oh, na they play. All the Jagaban supporters, oh, na they play. <laughs> now the Jagaban come and talk say, uh, make una. He say feel na pain. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. What sacrifices has he made? Ah, are you the feel where you the check the worker? You never see boss enter. You can't see Jagaban with the all the entourage and all of them. All he convey, all he convey. Oh, they they carry and they go. All of them, even governor said that they carry and they. Go, why you? You never know, see anyone enter, okay? Oh, they support them. They could not play. They could move on to the other one. On the other hand, the DSS, everybody don't dig parallel because say <laughs> Nigeria now as a lawless country. No, be a sorry, the Kobo come out, come threaten the Igbo people. Meanwhile, a mefell is sitting in custody. Why they never arrest them? They could not hear news. 60 human rights lawyers saw the High Court in Abuja to call for the arrest of the Director General of the State Security Service, Yusuf Bichi, over alleged violation of multiple judgments and orders of court directing the release of suspended CBN Governor Godwin Emefele from custody, a civil advocacy group known as the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, has also condemned Emefele's continued detention, stating that it is shameful that the DSS, which had failed to arrest ex-Niger Delta agitator, Asari Dokubo, whose viral video trended where he brandished military assault rifles and threatened to bring fire and brimstone on a section of Nigeria, has not been arrested and charged for illegal possession of firearms, but instead is pressing charges against Emefele for alleged illegal possession of firearms. The group also queried why all the bandits brandishing military-grade weapons in videos have not been arrested and prosecuted by the DSS. Over the weekend, Rufai, uh, you know, I spoke with SAM Fushika, who, you know, talked about the fact that even this firearm possession that the federal government has charged Emefele, which, you know, we saw that case um, over the weekend, is a fine of about 20,000 naira. I mean, this is the charge that they have against the Mephile. But I think the main bone of contention for me, Rufai, is this brandishing of assault a rifle. You see the group calling, uh, you know, Emefele's arrest as, you know, a, a shame. In fact, it's almost making a, a mockery of the whole system at this no, point. No, but, but, Oji, even a blind man knows mm -hmm. that this is vendetta against Emefele. Even the deaf hears that this is vendetta against the Mephile. The president gave himself out. He went to a foreign country and he called the CBN rotten. And he had pretty much made his point known as regards this. We all know the speech of Wagbe Naira Pamu and all of that. And the vendetta was so strong that when they tried doing this last year, the court rebuffed the DSS. But once President Sinubu was sworn in and they got their chance, we all remember the calisthenics that happened. 
how they use a private jet to go carry a Befele from Lagos, bundle them and all of that with our own taxpayers' money, only for us to see the charge sheets. But they've kept in there for a long month. They've ransacked his homes. Allegedly, so, I heard it was about 300,000 uh, Yeah, so they've ransacked his homes. I mean, if they found something incriminating, they yeah. should be able to put it on the charge sheet after a month. But you see, I said something earlier on, and I think I need to break it down. It's either we are trying to build a funny democracy, a democracy that is a joke to the world because there's no respect for rule of law, or we are trying to build a phony democracy, which is a fake democracy, which is a pseudo-democracy, which is militarism. And that's why you see that they are making arguments they are not bad. Look at the non-state actor brandishing a weapon exactly that's the point right there look at the non-state actor brandishing a weapon yes and not should anybody and and the dss have not been able to do anything but what, why would you blame him because this non-state actor also goes ahead to claim that he's so important that the president invited him so when the president invited non-state actors and right there at the villa he came to take a swipe at the military of this country and nothing has been done to him so when i said earlier on that doctor so people are bigger than the law in this country i've been proven right he took a swipe at the military a very respectable institution but there were no consequences Branching a gun on live video, there was, I think somebody even wrote a petition as regards this. Nothing. Right. So we see how our country is playing out. And I ask again, do we want a funny democracy? Because all of this, the world is looking at us and laughing. This is the Nigeria that wants to be the giant of Africa. Or a phony democracy. And when I mean a phony democracy, a democracy that it's only in name but the cardinal point of a democracy which is the respect for the rule of law and the fact that the leaders can restrain themselves from their own personal interest is no longer the end of the day so i submit to nigerians this morning what kind of democracy do we want so make we just talk about cb you see and i make had always a talk and say if nigeria were to be a place where laws rules are being respected eh i started the kubo for don't day somewhere just like <laughs> yakubo if i don't day somewhere many many people that think that the law is nothing to them like they are above the laws they sh they would have been thinking twice before they carry out some certain action you can imagine i started the kubo come out for broadcast television on the cock ak-47 because they he hates ebos and he hates mazin and they can you see if it's to be in a civilized place not just civilized but a place where the rules of laws are being respected if i don't do somewhere if i don't even get the mind to even come out can't do that thing but uh, the laws always catch up with those who have no say for them mm -hmm. and i know i see they play and i see they play for nigeria but anyway nigeria must get better you see now see the future of nigeria that tomorrow nigeria it must come i beg make share this video for me thank you so much for watching i'm gonna see you now for my next upload